Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the histology of the kidney. The kidney has cortex and medulla. The cortex has glomerulus. These are tuft of capillaries. These are fenestrated capillaries. We have also proximal convoluted tubule in this uh, histological preparation. Distal convoluted tubule. These are the structure found mostly in the cortex of the kidney. In the medullary region, we get the collecting duct. This is the collecting duct here. We have the loop of Henle. We have the descending limb of loop of Henle, ascending limb of limb of loop of Henle, the thick ascending limb with the thick descending limb of loop of Henle. So we are getting this image here, the collecting duct here, and the parts of the loop of Henle. So in the histology of the kidney, if we have a hemi section of the kidney, we'll get kidney has cortex, kidney has medulla, medulla has the pyramid, and cortex here is lined by the capsule that is a connective tissue capsule. And cortical tissue goes in between the pyramid, we call it renal column. At the tip of the pyramid, we have the renal papilla that opens into minor calyx and minor calyx will, will open into the major calyx. They will unite together to form the renal pelvis and the ureter. In the cortical region, we will get these structures here like that of the glomerulus of the kidney, the proximal convoluted table, and we will get the descending limb of loop of Henle ascending limb of loop of Henle, then we'll get the distal convoluted table and the ultimate will go to the collecting duct. Okay, so here in a section at the, at the juxta medullary area here, just lower part of the medulla, we, we'll, get, we'll get the medullary rays. Medullary rays composed of the collecting duct going down there plus the descending limb, ascending limb of the loop of Henle. Here the thick descending limb, the thick ascending limb, and here the thin segment of the loop of Henle. These are all straight structure. We'll get around the collecting duct, we'll get some other straight structure. They forms the medullary ray. We'll also get some type of cortical labyrinth that composed of glomerulus. These are the tuft of capillaries. Okay, so if you go through the renal corpuscle, this is the glomerulus or renal corpuscle. Okay. It, it is composed of the top of capillaries. We have the afferent arteriole and the efferent arteriole. And this is present in the Bowman's capsule. Bowman's capsule has outer parietal layer of the, glom of the Bowman's capsule and visceral layer. Visceral layer is lined by the podocyte with a lot of pedicels there. And this glomerulus has this part is the tubular pole. This is the vascular pole here. Here, the distal convoluted tubule come here and forms the juxtaglomerular apparatus. Juxtaglomerular apparatus has the components like that of the juxtaglomerular cells. These are the modified tunica media cells of the afferent arteriole, mostly, maybe a few part maybe some of the 
cells of the efferent artery will also take part in juxtaglomerular apparatus, but it is mostly the juxtaglomerular cells of the efferent artery or tunica media. The distal convoluted table here, distal convoluted table, there will be modification of the cell. We call it macula densa. Macula densa senses the electrolyte level and pressure level so that the juxtaglomerular apparatus come into action. So these are sensor macula densa. And juxtaglomerular cell releases the renin and that is essential for renin angiotensin converting system and uh, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system that is initiated by juxtaglomerular cell that releases the renin. So this is the podocyte, a lot of food processes. This forms the visceral layer of the Bowman's capsule. This is the podocyte. And we have the glomerular filtration. Glomerular filtration is carried out by the endothelial cell. It bears a lamina and the podocyte. Okay, this is the filtration membrane. Endothelium of the artery on here. The, the endothelium here, we call it the capillary capillaries are fenestrated we are seeing a lot of opening endothelium the capillary and it is very thin basal lamina that is covered by the by the podocyte that forms the filtration membrane Okay, so if you go to the juxtaglomerular apparatus, what we'll see here, juxtaglomerular apparatus, okay, macula dense of distal tubule, these are modified epithelial cell of the distal tubule, and they sense the electrolyte level and pressure level in the distal tubule. So that the juxtaglomerular cell, which are the modified tunica media cell of the efferent artery, they will release the renin that will convert the angiotensin that is present in the blood to the angiotensin 1 that will be converted from angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 in the lungs that angiotensin 2 is very much potent vasoconstrictor angiotensin 1 is also a vasoconstrictor but angiotensin 2 is a potent very potent vasoconstrictor and that will also stimulate the production of aldosterone from the adrenal cortex. Aldosterone will work on the distal convoluted table to retain the, retain the sodium and water. Okay. So here we are looking at the irinoferous table, the part of the nephron just distal to the glomerulus in a cross-sectional morphology. If we look at the proximal convoluted table, we'll see a lot of brush border. There is a lot of microvilli present there. This are keyboardal epithelium. Then if we go to the to the collecting table, this color little bit pale and very minimum less amount of microvilli or brush border. The distal convoluted tubule again less brass border, keyboard epithelial cell, and we have the ascending limb of loop of Henley. The height of the cell is now decreasing a little bit, a few microvilli present here. And this is the thin segment of the loop of Henley, thin segment of loop of Henley. This is the descending limb, ascending limb. They are lined by the simple squamous epithelia. This is the collecting duct. This is the site for the action of the, the antidiuretic hormone. Elderstone work on the distal convoluted tubule, site of action of the elderstone. Okay. So if we go to the highlights capsule of the kidney composed of connective tissue, Cortex contains a lot of glomerulus, okay, and that proximal convoluted table, also part of the distal convoluted table. Medulla is composed of the pyramids. We have 10 to 12 pyramid. The apex of the pyramid goes to the to the renal papilla. Lobes, 
one pyramid and surrounding cortical tissue forms the lobe. Pyramid are around 10 to 12 in number, pyramidal in shape, and they are present in the medulla. Papilla, tip of the pyramid has papilla. Nephron, this is the structural and functional unit of the kidney. In each kidney, around 1 million nephrons. Renal corpuscle is the top of capillary in the Bowman's capsule. It is covered by the visceral layer of the Bowman's capsule. We will get the cell, the podocyte cell that is a part of the visceral layer of the Bowman's capsule. The parietal layer of Bowman's capsule is composed of simple squamous epithelium that is again continuous with that of the keyboardal epithelium of the proximal convoluted table. Filtration apparatus consists of the capillary endothelium. It's very thin basal lamina. And these capillaries are arterial capillaries and they, are, they have fenestration and then we'll get then we'll get the podocytes. Renin is secreted from the juxtaglomerular cell. It will convert angiotensin, which is usually present in the blood, in the angiotensin one, mostly in the liver. And angiotensin one will be converted into angiotensin two in the lung. And that angiotensin two is a vasoconstrictor agent. It also stimulates the production of endosterone. And we must know the collecting duct is the site of action of the antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin. And that's all about the about the histology of the kidney. If you like my video, please support my channel. Please subscribe me and share the information with your friend. And have a nice day. Bye now.